I love shooting on film. That beautiful colors that you get and that just nostalgic look, I just absolutely love. But it isn't half time consuming, taking up a huge amount of your time, getting it developed and processed. Plus, in recent years, film has come a lot more expensive than it used to be. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my four step process on how you can recreate this soft film look digitally in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. So I recently went on a cowboy style photo shoot in Gloucester and it's something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time and I ended up with some of these photos here which I'm really happy with. But what I wanted to do is create a bit more of a softer film look and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I created this look in four simple steps. So step one is going to be global adjustments, step two I'm going to be showing you guys how to colour grade, step three I'm going to be showing you how I did all my masking and local adjustments and lastly step four I'm going to be showing you how I added effects like post cropping vignette and also how to add in the right amount of grain. So let's move on to step one which is global adjustments. Right guys, so this is the photo that I'm going to be editing today. It's a, a series of photos that I've taken, but this is the one that I haven't quite edited yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the basics panel, and what I'll do is just change a few of these adjustments, because I am finding this photo a little bit dark. Now I'm gonna leave the temperature and tint alone, because I think I am pretty much right. I used a white balance card uh, to test this with the camera, so I actually shot in camera correct white balance. So a lot of these photos here, I've got the correct white balance straight away, but if your photo is a little bit too blue or a little bit too yellow, I'd go ahead and change that first. Okay, so let's go ahead and move down to exposure. Now, I'm pretty happy with the exposure, but I'm finding the shadows a little bit too dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the highlights here, I'm gonna drop that down by a very small amount, by around about minus 10, and then I'm gonna go to the shadows here, I'm just gonna bring them up ever so slightly. So I'm gonna probably go for around plus 20 in this case. Then with the whites, now with this soft film look, what we're actually going to do is re slightly reduce the dynamic range of the image. Um, Cause cameras today have got great dynamic range, lots of information in the highlights and shadows. Sh there we go. Lots of information in the highlights and shadows, got there. But what we wanna do is create a more of a film look, which will slightly reduce the dynamic range. So what we're going to do is gonna to go to the whites here. We're gonna drop those down by around about minus 50 in this case. And with the blacks here, what I'm gonna do is actually increase those by the same amount, by plus 50. Now what this will do is if you actually have a look at the uh, histogram here, we've slightly reduced it. So it hasn't got as much information in the highlights and shadows. So we're gonna go for something like so. Then in texture here, what I'm gonna do is increase texture ever so slightly, but not by much. Plus 10 usually works in this case. And then with clarity and dehaze, we're actually going to reduce them. Now, I usually drop clarity in most portrait photos. It just helps to soften out those skin tones, but it works particularly well when you're creating a softer, filmier look. You're almost creating like a glow effect and reducing the clarity ever so slightly works really nice when doing so. So what we're gonna do is go to the clarity here. We're gonna drop that down by minus 20. And then with dehaze here, we're also gonna drop that down by minus 10. And then lastly, we're just gonna go to our vibrance and saturation. And we're gonna leave vibrance alone. We're just gonna go to the saturation and take out just a small amount of those colors. So we're gonna go for minus 10 in saturation. Now, I, when we're looking at the crop of this photo and the aspect ratio, I'm pretty happy. I'm happy to go for a landscape uh, three by two, but I'm finding it's ever so slightly crooked. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to my crop tool here. I'm gonna go to my angle. I'm gonna use the bathtub as my horizon line. I think that will work quite nicely. I'm just gonna shoot along the bathtub like so, just put the arrow across. And as you can see, we've corrected it by about 0.5 of a degree. So not by much, go ahead and click enter. I'm a lot happier now with the kind of, it just looked a bit skewed. I'm not sure if you could see that on YouTube, but yeah, it just looked a little bit skewed. So I'm a lot happier with that. So that's all I'm gonna be doing in the basics panel. What I'm gonna do now is go out of the basics panel and I'm just going to go to the tone curve. Now, in the tone curve, you've got four curves we're gonna be changing. You've got your point curve, which is your main exposure. And then you've got your three channel curves. So you've got your red channel, green channel, and blue channel. Now, in the main point channel, so this is your main exposure, we're going to do is gonna, again, reduce that dynamic range just a little bit further by basically clipping the white and clipping the black. So we're not getting true white and we're not getting true black. We're gonna get this slightly softer gray tone in the highlights and this kind of softer black tone in the black areas. Now to do so, all I'm gonna do is simply reduce the whites down like so 
and then increase those blacks. So we're going for something like so. Okay, but obviously we're gonna add a curve to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the highlight section and raise it up, and then we're gonna go to the shadow section and drop that down. So you can see we're creating this S curve appearing. But what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna bring down those little darker blacks a little bit further, adding a little bit more of a curve to it. And then in the highlight regions, in between the highlights and whites, I'm gonna raise those up a little bit further. So we end up with a curve that looks similar to this. Then roughly find the middle, which is the input of 128, and then you want the output of 128. So the midpoint, we're not changing the overall exposure of the photo, we're just affecting basically the very bright highlights and whites, and the very dark shadows and blacks. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about input and output and what the curve tool actually does, go ahead and watch this video here, which is my masterclass tutorial on the tonal curves adjustment layer. Okay, so once we've done that, what I'm gonna do is jump over to the red, green, and blue channel, and I'm gonna create a really simple effect. We're just gonna add in a small amount of color contrast. All you'll need to do is go to the highlights, raise those up ever so slightly, go to the shadows here, and also drop those down. Then all you'll need to do is right click, go down to copy channel settings in the red channel, go to the green channel, right click, paste channel settings. So we're pasting the exact same tone curve over from the red to the green channel and then the same for the blue channel. So right click and we're gonna go ahead down to paste channel settings. And all we've done is we've basically got the exact same curve on the red, green and blue channel basically adding in this natural color contrast that you can see here. Now, if you're finding it's a little bit too strong, all you'll need to do is simply go to your basics panel. Well, firstly, you could go to the tone curve and just reduce them slightly, or you could just go to the basics panel here and actually just simply reduce that contrast there like so. I'm not gonna do so because I quite like it in this look. Now, if you're still finding it's a little bit too dark, what you can do is go to the exposure here and simply increase that ever so slightly. So I might increase it by 0.1 of a percent. Uh, or point 0.1 of a, a stop, but that's all I'm going to do in this example. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing in global adjustments, step one. Let's move over to step two, which is color grading. Okay, so when creating this softer look, when color grading it, we're actually gonna be using three tools. We're gonna be using the color mixer tool, the color grading tool, and then lastly, the calibration tool. Okay, so let's drop out of the basics panel and let's drop down to where you can see it says color mixer. Now color mixer or HSL adjustment layers can basically change the hue, which is the type of color, the saturation, which is the amount of color, and then luminance, which is the brightness of that color. And we can target it through eight color brands, all the way from red, all the way down to magenta. Okay, so let's start off with hue first. Now, when it comes to color grading, I usually don't like messing with the reds or oranges because they're predominantly found in the skin tones. And the last thing you wanna do is change the color of the skin tones because that will immediately look really peculiar. Unless the skin tones have got maybe a little bit too much magenta or blue in it, which is probably a white balance problem, not a skin tone problem, then I would slightly adjust them. But most of the time I do leave them alone and something I do recommend. So we're gonna skip out reds and oranges when changing hue. What we're gonna do is go to the yellow here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase those, adding a little bit more green to the yellows. We're gonna go for around about 15 in this example. Next, what we're gonna do is go to the greens. We're gonna actually add a little bit more blue to those greens. So we're gonna increase those by quite a lot or maybe a little bit less. So let's go for 20 in this example. And then let's go to aquas, add a lot more blue to those aquas, making them a little bit more tealy. And what we're gonna do is increase those to uh, around 50% in this photo. And then lastly, we're gonna go to the blues. We're gonna make them a lot more teal. I really like teal in the softer film look because when you ever have a look at some film photos, you'll see there's usually a lot of teal in them. So I do like replicating that in my digital photos when creating like a film simulation look. So I'm gonna go to my blue here. I'm gonna drop those down by, not by much, but around about minus 10. We're gonna use the calibration tool later to create a stronger effect. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to leave purple and magentas alone. Again, sometimes they're found in skin tone, so I don't like changing them massively when I'm actually color grading for portrait photos. Okay, so let's move out of hue and let's go over to saturation. Now in saturation, again, I'm gonna leave the reds and oranges alone, because again, they're found usually in the skin tones. So let's move over to yellows. What I'm gonna do is drop those down by a little bit. I'm gonna drop those down by minus 15%. Then I'm gonna drop down the greens by minus 25. 
Same situation for aquas, minus 25. That usually affects the sky, but obviously there's no sky in this photo. And it's the same situation with blue. I'm gonna drop those down by minus 25. Next we've got is purple. What I'm gonna do is drop those down by minus 50. And then lastly, we've also got magenta there. We're gonna drop that down by the same number, minus 50. And then lastly, we've got luminance, which is the brightness of those colors. So we can actually adjust some of them to affect the skin tones if you're finding them a bit too dark or a bit too bright. They're not matching the scene correctly. So what we do is go to the reds here. We'd increase those by a small amount. We're gonna increase those by 10. And it's the same situation with oranges, but not by as much, probably around about 5% usually works. Then we go to the yellows. We'll increase those by 15. Next, we'll increase the greens by 40. Same situation with aquas, we'll increase those by 40. And also blue there, we'll increase those by 40. Again, aquas and blues are usually found in the sky. And if you desaturate them and then increase the brightness, you're creating this softer look, making it a little bit more pastel -y. But obviously, there is no sky in my photo. But if there's a sky in your photo, you should see the difference. And then lastly, we've got purple and magenta, which we're going to leave alone. Okay, so out of color mixer, what we're gonna do is now drop down to color grading. Now color grading works a little bit differently because it works basically adding a color over a certain exposure tonal area of your photo. So highlights, midtones, and shadows. What we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna add a color cast to the highlights and a color cast to the shadows, adding a warmer tone to the highlights and a darker, cooler tone to the shadows. So what we're gonna do is go to the shadows first. And what we're gonna do is we wanna select a blue color. Now it really depends, but what I like doing is choosing a complementary color for the shadows and highlights. So what I'm gonna do is if I go ahead and choose this blue over here, almost draw an imaginary line and think of adding in a bit more of a yellowy orange tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose my favorite hue of 220, which is a nice kind of darkish blue. And then what I'm gonna do is add in the saturation, but I'm not gonna add in a major amount maybe around about 10% saturation in this example. Then draw an imaginary line, go to the highlight section, and then add in that color. Now, if you're adding in a hue the same as mine, 220, then I'm gonna add in a hue of 50. That's almost the opposite of the color that we've just chosen. And again, look at the photo and then start adding in that warmth there. Now I'm probably gonna add in a little bit more than I did in the shadows. I think I'm gonna add in around about 15%, but I wouldn't go any further than 20% either in the shadows or highlights when it comes to saturation, because it ends up looking a bit peculiar, especially if you've got a darker photo or an overexposed photo, it ends up messing it up. So I like being a little bit more conservative when it comes to my saturation here, just because I don't want to end up it being messed up at all when I'm applying this particular preset onto darker or brighter photos. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing in color grading. Last in the color grading section, step two, we're gonna jump over to calibration. Now, calibration is a really helpful tool for color grading, especially if you're jumping in between brands, maybe you're shooting on a Canon camera and a Sony camera. This can really help adjust your preset to make sure it works across all camera brands globally, because every camera brand has got a slightly different color science to it. I'm sure you've probably seen that if you've gone from one camera brand to another. So to basically fix that, we can actually use the calibration tool. If you wanna know more, go ahead and watch this video here, which is my masterclass tutorial all about the calibration tool. Okay, so we've got the red channel here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna increase that ever so slightly, plus 10, and then we're gonna actually go to the saturation here and drop that down by a small number, by around minus 10. Then what we're gonna do is go to the green primary here. We're gonna drop those number down in the hue by minus 10 here, and we're gonna leave the saturation alone in this example. And then we're gonna go to the blue here. We're gonna create the biggest change. We're gonna drop that down to about minus 24. Five, I think in this example, this will really affect the sky if you do have the sky in your photo. And then we're gonna leave the saturation alone. So as you can see, already this is looking really good, but there's a few more steps that we need to do. So that is step two. Let's move over to step three, which is masking. Now in masking, we're not gonna make major changes. What we're gonna do is go over to my mask panel here, and basically all we're gonna do is create three masks. We're gonna create a background mask, a linear mask, and a radial mask. The background mask is designed to add more grain to the background than the foreground. Then the radial mask is going to create a nice soft glow, and then the linear mask is gonna add in a little bit of shadows. And it really depends on the type of photo you're working with. But these are usually the three masks that I use to create this soft glowing effect. So what we're gonna do is the first one we're gonna do is gonna simply go ahead and select background in our AI masking. And it's done, a, yeah, it's done an okay job, but luckily it doesn't need to be a very good mask. All we're doing is adding in grain. So once you've made that mask, I'm actually just going to call this um, 
uh, grain mask, just so I know what it does. Uh, I always recommend naming your masks if, if you can. So I'm gonna do is go ahead and click OK. What I'm gonna do is go all the way down to where it is you're in your effects. We're gonna go to our grain here. I'm gonna add in a small amount of grain to the background because in our step four, we're gonna add grain to the foreground. So we wanna add more grain to the background and less grain to the foreground, just so the photo doesn't look too grainy at all. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go for amount of 20 in the background. I'm gonna go for size of 15 and roughness of 40. And remember these numbers. These are gonna be the same numbers that we apply to the entire image globally in step four with effects. So make sure to write these numbers down. Okay, so once, once you've done that, what we're gonna do is go to new mask. And we're gonna do is drop down to linear gradient or linear mask. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask just at the bottom, just affecting that bathtub there. And all I'm gonna be doing is simply creating a darkened exposure. So I'm gonna darken that down, not by a major amount, probably by minus 0.75%. So something like so. I might extend that ever so slightly, basically just creating a slightly darker look to the bottom of this image. And then all I'm gonna do is create another mask. I'm gonna go down to radial gradient, and create a nice big gradient here. Now look at the scene, look at where the sun is coming from. Clearly the sun is coming from the right hand side. You can see it's a lot brighter in the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight that there, go for something like so. All I'm gonna do is go to my exposure here, bring that up by around about minus two five. Then I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna go to my texture clarity and dehaze. I'm going to my texture here. I'm gonna drop that down by around about minus five. Then clarity here, I'm gonna drop that down by minus 20. And D haze there, I'm also gonna drop that down by minus 20. If you're after a little bit more of a stronger effect, all you'll need to do is simply go to your exposure and add in a little bit more. So I'm gonna go for something, maybe around about 0.5 of a stop in this example. So as you can see, all we've done is created three masks. We've created a, let me just name this one, a darkened mask. Click OK, and then I've also created a lighten mask, uh, like so. Ooh. And go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, we've added a little bit more depth and we've added a little bit more 3D look and made the photo a little bit more poppy. So for example, we've just got to masks, we do the before, we do the after, we've darkened the basically the bottom and we've brightened sections of the background there. And that's all we're gonna be doing in step three. So let's move on to the very last step, step four, which is effects. Now in effects, all we're gonna be doing is basically creating two effects, really. We're gonna be creating a grain effect and then a post-cropping vignette. So to do that, what we do, we jump out of our mask panel, jump all the way down to our editing panel and go to effects. We've got our post-cropping vignette. All we're gonna do is go to our amount, create a negative vignette, that's a darkened vignette. I usually like choosing around my minus 20 here, then simply going to my feather hair and increasing that to 100, creating a nice, soft, post-cropping vignette in our photo. So it doesn't look majorly noticeable, but it really aids in the image and creates that more nostalgic look. Because again, old film cameras or lenses in general used to have kind of aberration problems and one of them was adding in a vignette. So we can actually replicate that in post simply by adding in a post-cropping vignette. And then lastly here, we've got our amount here. Now this is the same with our grain. So remember the numbers that we added in previously. I added in number of 20, size of 15, and then roughness of 40. And there we go. That is how you can create this awesome effect. So what I can do is now show you the before and show you the after. And we've added this nice soft look. Now I'm finding it maybe a little bit too cool. So what I can actually do is go to my temperature here just add in a little bit more warmth to this image. I might go for 5,900 Kelvin, but that's all I'm gonna be doing in this example. And I can actually show you a few other photos that I've actually used and applied this effect to. So for example, we've got another photo here. This is a portrait photo. I actually really like this image. And again, I can show you the before and after. Again, it's got that nice soft look. And then I've got this photo here. Again, same situation, I can show you the before and after, and you can see how it affects that kind of background, making it nice and pastel-y, adds that nice soft look to, and I absolutely love the amount of grain. As you can see, love the grain in the background there. Adds more grain to the background than the foreground, so the foreground looks nice and sharp, but it still looks like there's a lot of grain in the image. Then we've got another photo here. Again, same situation. I can show you the before and after. And then I've got a few other photos here. So this one I actually haven't applied an effect to because I wanna show you I've actually made it into a preset. So go to my presets here, my film simulation preset pack one, and I can actually drop down to soft film. 
you can see applies a really nice preset here. Again, adds all of those masks that I've talked about, actually applies them to the background, which is really nice. Again, same situation with this photo. I really like this image here. So I can go to soft film. Again, applies that preset, looks really nice. And then lastly, I've got this image here, which again, I'll go ahead and apply that preset and really nice. I can show you the before and after. I love this preset and hopefully you will too. Here is the before and here is the after. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is how you can create this awesome look in your photos just using Lightroom. And if you like this look and wanna support the channel, head over to my website where you can buy this look as a preset plus many other presets available. So if you wanna support the channel and get some awesome presets, head over to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever and I'll catch you guys next time.